Okay, so we'll move back to our subject, which is um, this interesting um, scenario that is um, developing in front of our eyes, which is very similar to what happened on Mount Carmel, where Elijah called all of Israel and King Ahab, who'd gone into Baal worship, and there was this big showdown. And the showdown was, um, uh, Elijah said, okay, today we're going to decide who the real God is. And uh, he said to the prophets of Ballarat, you build yourselves an altar. And he said, I'm going to build mine over here. And the God who answers by fire, let him be God. So there's this um, electrifying um, time where all of Israel are waiting with bated breath. The, uh, the prophets of Baal are dancing around their altar with their sacrifice slain on it and they're cutting themselves with stones and crying out and dancing and screaming and there's no answer. And at the end of the day as, as, the, um, as they approach the evening sacrifice, Elijah sort of calls it quits on the Baal worshippers and then he says, okay, come Israel, let's, you know, come up closer. And he repairs the altar and he pours water all over it. He pours seven buckets of water over the sacrifice. So everybody can see that he hasn't secretly planted, you know, a lit a match somewhere. And he just made, has a very simple prayer and he said, um, you know, oh God, um, hear me, you know, and let everybody know that you are God in Israel. And immediately before he even answers his prayer fire falls from heaven and it burns up not just the sacrifice but all the stones and the dust and all the people fall on their faces and they say Jehovah he is the God he's the God so there's this huge showdown and it results in um, everybody realizing who the, so the word God means strong one so who the strong one is who's the one that we can trust in who can we rely on and depend on and um, so this kind of scenario is what is developing right in front of our eyes as we've got this question mark which mountain is the real Mount Sinai which God do we worship and which law and here's a photo of the Mount Sinai where they're going to be walking up all the religious leaders this is the Mount Sinai that's um, being found by Constantine's mother and there's a um, a Catholic monastery I think there and if we go back here this is the real Mount Sinai which has been found you can see the blackened peak on top yes. there's many many archaeological findings all around there's the rock where the water flowed out and you can see all the rivulets you know where the waters run down um, there's a tabernacle built in stone down at the base um, there's pillars all around the mountain and there's the the stone where they had the um, the golden calf where they all danced around so it's very you know clear that this is the real Mount Sinai um, so we've got this Mount Sinai here where they're proclaiming this other false Ten Commandments but we have uh, the man who found the real Mount Sinai has also made this amazing discovery of the location where Jesus died which was at Golgotha you can see the the skull Golgotha means the place of the skull you can see the skull in the rock there um, somebody's just put all the connections all together in this one um, painting to connect all the dots um, so it says in the place where Jesus crucified which was Golgotha there was a garden and in the garden there was a tomb and so the tomb was right near at hand where Jesus was crucified but um, Ron was led to find not just the place of Jesus crucifixion but also the Ark of the Covenant that contains the real Ten Commandments and this is an incredibly exciting story because it's dynamic it's still um, it's still ongoing and the angel that was in the cave there were four angels in the cave when he went into the cave and one of the angels said to him that at the time of the national Sunday law the mark of the beast these Ten Commandments will be brought out to show all the world uh, that um, God's law hasn't changed and that God himself doesn't change and um, as a testimony as a witness to everybody so I just wanted to share that um, 
share that picture there now there is the call and I just want to re-emphasize this there is the call in Revelation chapter 18 and that is the call to all of God's sheep in every religion wherever they are they might not even have a religion most people in Australia don't we're a very um, hedonistic nation we're just pleasure seekers and we really are not a religious nation we don't have a religious history really really that much at all but there is a special call going out from heaven from Jesus who is seated on the throne in heaven <clears throat> and he says this is after the declaration by this mighty angel that comes down saying Babylon is fallen in other words Satan's kingdom and has become a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in a cage of every unclean hateful bird and there's this call that he gives to come out of her my people so you are not partakers of her sins and so you do not receive of her plagues for her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities so there is a way to survive the great reset there is a way to survive the COVID um, pandemic and any other future ones there is a way to be victorious there is a way to come through the tribulation and that way is to come out of the system this is Jesus call come out of Babylon um, so that we don't partake in our sins in her sins and we're not guilty of those same sins um, and so we don't receive of her plagues so this is um, all of God's biddings are enablings so if God tells us to do something he will enable us to do it so that's the good news and I just want to emphasize that the God of Babylon um, was the God Nimrod, Samaramis and Tammuz. This was the original uh, religion of Babylon and in the book The Two Babylons by Reverend Hislop he reveals how that Babylon continues today in the worship of, believe it or not, the Trinitarian concept of God in the Bible and the concept of the Trinity is not actually mentioned in the Bible but the beautiful truth that God is actually a father, a literal father who gave Gave birth to his son in the days of eternity and so Jesus existed as the son of God from the very beginning from the days of eternity and then he worked with his father to create all things and it's this precious son the one he calls his beloved and the one who he says is the man who is my fellow it is this this incredible being who's exactly like the father he inherited all things from his father he's the one who the father has given to our human race to be one with us to experience life as a human being in human flesh and to um, and to redeem us and save us to be victorious over the devil so we don't need to be afraid of the devil not sharing anything to um, to create fear in people because Jesus had the victory over death over disease over the devil and over the world and the flesh he had the victory over everything and Jesus victory is ours and we can live it and we can walk in it so it's really good news and there is going to be a great multitude who have the victory over the beast and over his image if you want to read about that that's in Revelation chapter 7 now we're getting very tired here we've had a long period of, of recording and um, so we're going to wind it up but I encourage you to go and read that and read Revelation chapter um, uh, actually read from Revelation chapter 12 onwards I think um, it's and a very exciting time and Jesus is coming and eternity is beginning and heaven is a beautiful place and it's a place of relationships God's a God of relationships and he's a God of love he's a God of freedom a God of hope and a God of all comfort so times are going to get really challenging but get yourself a Bible and get into the Bible and get familiar with God's beautiful promises because they're going to keep us through the coming times and Psalms chapter 91 is a beautiful psalm that was given to us especially for this time of trouble it's really worthwhile memorizing that there's actually a book full of stories of incredible miracles that people have experienced in claiming this psalm Psalm 91 so that's just one one beautiful passage to to be aware of but Jesus says I'm with you all always even unto the end of the world he says I will never ever leave you nor forsake you so don't be afraid do you know the 
the greatest command in the whole New Testament is don't fear, don't be afraid. So don't be afraid. Yes, it is going to get bad, but you know what? Jesus told us what to do. If we obey his commands, we've got no need to fear and we can be confident and we can help rescue others as well. So I look forward to joining you on that journey and I look forward to hearing from you or seeing you. You can join me over at Telegram. I've got a channel there, News Decoded. I've got Empower Up. Um, which is solutions um, and how to come out of the system. Um, you can contact me by email at News Decoded or now my channel at the moment, my website, I've got a couple of problems. I've got to pay something so that it will work properly. So hang tight on that. But you can contact me via email at my website or you can contact me at Abundant Living Books. Uh, that's B W O K S books plural at gmail.com. You can contact me there. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Robert, for everything you do and for the great work that and the great effort that you put into all of this. Likewise, thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Bye.